Good evening, everyone. Um, our professors, staff, um, the residents, and, and all the students that are here tonight, I greet you all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Um, firstly, let us close our eyes as we pray. Father, once more, we thank you, Lord, for, for bringing us all here safely in this evening and be with those who are still on their way coming to this meeting. May you bless us all and hear and grant our petitions. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Um, the announcements um, are like this. You see these cards. Please write your name. Get a paper and write your name in this card and bring it back, this card. There's a box there at the back. Um, also make sure your ticket, your ticket should be clipped for the sixth time now for those who've been attending these meetings, you know, every time to each, each day. That is Monday, Tuesday, and today. We, we are still on, on the third day, but it's just that um, on the sixth meeting, um, we continue finishing the third day. Um, our speaker for tonight uh, is none other than Duduzi. No, but one of the things I like about him, he's a good teacher. I had some challenges in few modules, but I made through those modules because of his teachings. And, and you must be patient, because you do upi, angilang yes. I'm still cooking, you know. But because it's you who wants something from him, you need to be patient. And out of that, you will gain a lot from him. He's one of the historians that I ever met. Uh, he's, he's very good. Um, guys, make sure that your tickets are clipped. And um, don't forget, Friday is going to be that grand what? Price of about 60 people. Let's not forget about that. Um, this time, I've been, you know, noticing something here. This morning, there was a number that was called, and the number didn't show up. Hey, we were watching this thing of corruption. Hey, everyone, we were watching. This thing of corruption, we were watching. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, tonight, um, he, Pastor Zewuza is my home, homeboy. And, and there is something that I've noticed for all the, you know, these drawings that we are doing here, only females that are winning. Uh, guys, I'm, I'm watching. Let's do some corruption. We'll see tonight. Uh, Pastor Zewuza, can you please come and draw? You know, and see whether it's going to be a male or female today. You know. <laughs> and see who's going to win. <clears throat> you picked a number. Number? Number 9292. Number 92. Do we have that number here? Eh? Oh, there is a, eh? 
Marilyn. Hi. Guys, it's not me. The Uza Jordan and, and the number is here. Who's that mail? Where's that mail? Is a, is a mail. And we are asking this guy, please don't be shy. Please don't be shy. Come, my brother. <laughs> please, please don't be shy. We want to take a picture with you, man. <laughs> ah. <laughs> ah. Thank you. Let's look at the camera. Thanks, man. This is yours. God bless you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Ah, guys, there's a change. <laughs> there is a change. We're moving. All right. <clears throat> at this time. We're going to um, sing trouble sometimes. After trouble sometimes, Mfundisi will come and deliver the message for tonight. And I hope you will receive the blessing uh, of this Wednesday and uh, see to it what will happen tomorrow. Each day has got its own challenges and blessings. Yes. Trouble sometimes. I greet you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Have you ever wondered Amen. that there would, there would be a day in history that would be your last day on earth? Have you ever thought about the reality that that day could be today? Could be your last day you spend with your spouse. Could be your last day you will submit that assignment oh. on tennis in. <laughs> it could be your, your last day. You kiss your boyfriend. <laughs> it could be your last day. You kiss your girlfriend in the bushes. <laughs> Have we ever thought about that? And God made sure that you are here tonight. For tomorrow is not promised. You only have this moment. For the first time in your life, put a smile in God's face. The heaven is watching you. That today, you will make God proud. Don't let this opportunity pass you by. Don't let this moment pass you by. Make God proud today. It was Miles Monroe who said the greatest gift that God ever gave man, it was the gift of life. Genesis 2, 7. And the Lord God formed man out of the dust of the ground and he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living being. But in Genesis 3, man lost that gift of life. 
they sinned against God. They disobeyed God's weight. Then the relationship between man and God was broken. It is John Pauline who says, in Adam, the entire human race received sin and death. Sin gave power to the enemy called death. And death fears no one on earth. Death can nothing about your status. Death can nothing about your plans. Death doesn't care whether you are 18. Death doesn't care that you are 19. Death doesn't care that you are 12 years old. Death doesn't care that you are 34 years old. He fears no one on earth. Death took down King David, the man after God's own heart. He went down to the grave and never came back. Death took down Nebuchadnezzar, who built Babylon. He went down to the grave and never came back. Death took down King Solomon, the man who has knowledge, the man of wealth. He went to the grave and never came back. Death took down Muhammad Ali. The world's greatest. He went down to the grave and never came back. Death does not care that you go to the gym every day. Death does not care that you have six pack. Death does not care about your health. Death does not care that you are a vegetarian. Death is an intruder. Death is an uninvited guest. You may be sitting there with your children and death will come in and intrude. You may be sitting there watching soccer, El Clasico. Death will come and intrude. You may be sitting there with your wife. Death will come and intrude. And death took down the Queen of England. She went down to the grave and never came back. Death took down Plato and, Ar and, and Aristotle. With their wisdom, they went down to the grave and never came back. But there is a man. There is a man. I'm saying there is a man who came from heaven to earth, to the grave. He gave death his life. He said, to take my life, but don't be excited. I am coming back on the first day to receive my life. Don't be too excited. Who is this man? Go with me to First Thessalonians 4, verse 13 to 18. Is this man our hope? The message today. The topic says the greatest hope. Is this man our hope? We do not know, but we will find it now. Brothers, we do not want you to be ignorant about those who fall asleep or to grieve like the rest of men who have no hope. We believe that Jesus died and rose again. And so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. According to the Lord's own, own weight, we tell you that we who are still alive, who are left till the coming of the Lord, will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of, of an archangel, 
and with the trumpet call of God and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up, not that weight, together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage each other with this weight. May the good Lord bless the reading of his word. Amen. Shall we close our eyes? Heavenly Father, I'm about to touch your things. Cover me with the cloak of righteousness and feed your sheep. In Jesus' name, amen. In 1850, according to Act 17, verse 1 to 10, Paul, Silas, and Timothy, they traveled to Thessalonica and they established a church there. And this church was consist of Greeks, converts. And while Paul was teaching the church about the soon coming of Christ, there was an opposition. Wherever there is a preaching of the gospel, there will always be an, an opposition. Then Paul had to flee to Bria, from Bria to Athens, from Athens to Corinthians. And while he was in Corinth, there was death in the church. While he was in Corinth, there was death in the church. The intruder came into the church. An uninvited guest came into the church. While they were excited about the coming of the Lord, death came into the church. The fact that you are waiting for the second coming of Christ, it does not mean that death will not come. Death will come. Don't be too excited. You need to know that death is here. The day you are born, also you start traveling through your grave. Death came while they were waiting for the second coming of Christ. I was watching a clip in YouTube. I saw a deer drinking water. And then there came, within a twinkle of an eye, a crocodile. And the face of the deer was inside the crocodile. And the deer does not drink water. If the waters, there is a movement there. Because the movement means that there is a danger in the waters. There is death in the waters. This time, deer came at the right time. The waters were quiet. But the enemy came and dragged the deer into the waters. The fact that the waters are quiet, it does not mean that your enemies are sleeping. The fact that everything is going well in your life, it does not mean that your enemies are sleeping. The fact that you are waiting for the second coming of Christ, it does not mean that death will not intrude. Death is always here. And then Paul wrote a letter while he was in Thessalonica. And then he first sent Timothy into the church. And then church came back with the report in Corinth and that there is death in the church. And the Christians are creeping like pagans. And you will remember this time there was a belief that when someone dies, it is the end. When someone dies, it is the end. There was a belief of the Sadducees that there is no resurrection. There were also Epicureanism that believes that, that there are no future requirements. There are also Zoroastrianism. They also believe that 
There are no future punishment. There are no future requirements. There are no future punishment. And then they grieved like the rest. And then Paul wrote a letter while he was there in Corinth. And then he wrote, he said to them in the letter, he gave them an eschatological encouragement. And then he said to them, brothers, we do not want you to be ignorant about those who fall asleep. The word ignorant, Paul uses it more than six times. And the word ignorant, the opposite of the word ignorant is knowledge. Which means they were uninformed about the state of the dead. And then knowledge is associated with light. And then ignorant is, is associated with darkness. Which means when you are ignorant, you are like in the room full of darkness. You need someone to turn on the light of knowledge. When I first came here, I was like in the room full of darkness. But from semester to semester, ah, my lecturers, turn on the light of knowledge. Turn on the light of knowledge. I am no longer the same as I was when I first came here. Ah, you can't spend four years at Helderberg and still remain ignorant. You can't spend three years at Helderberg and still remain ignorant. Which one is this one? <laughs> that is not no man. Accept it and say, look. When it comes to the books, you are shallow. But in the dating, you are number one. When it comes to, to academics, you are very shallow. But when, when it comes to umtolo, you are number one. You can't spend four years here and still be ignorant, and still be in, hey, but it's in darkness. And Paul says, I do not want you to be ignorant about those who fall asleep. You will notice that he uses euphemism. Fall asleep. And in this time, this euphemism was used not by Christians alone, but also those uh, who were pagans. But to pagans, it was eternal sleep. So Paul says, don't grieve like pagans. For the death of a Christian, it is not permanent, but it is temporary. Therefore, don't grieve like those who do not have hope. We do have hope. Who is this hope? Then Paul tells us that Paul says, even if you cry, don't cry and stop, but cry and keep going. When you grieve, don't grieve and stop, but grieve and keep going. Keep going to church. Keep reading your Bible. Don't grieve and stop. Cry and keep going, for there is hope. Therefore, who is this hope? Paul says, we believe that Jesus died and rose again. And so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. Therefore we know that this hope, it is Jesus Christ himself who died. You notice that he says Jesus Christ died. But he says Christians have fallen asleep. Jesus Christ died in our place. He suffered our agony and curse so that we might sleep in him. When we die, we sleep in Jesus. For death is temporary. Jesus is coming again to fetch us home. I need my grave now. I need my grave now. It is Miles Monroe who says, the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ 
was the confirmation that death has lost its power. This is your mama who passed away a long time ago. This is death holding your mother in the grave. This is your mother who passed away a long time ago. This is your child who passed away holding on to the place at hope. This, this is your child who passed away holding on to the blessed hope. This is your uncle who passed away, holding on to the blessed hope. Then this scholar says, death has lost its power. Because Jesus died and rose again. He came back from the grave. This one has no power over this one. No man has seen alone. No man has gone. But he has no power over this one. For Jesus died and rose again. He came back from death. Therefore, he says, Jesus will come back again and fetch this one. And this one is inside this person. It is his faith through Jesus Christ. And when the line of Judah comes back, this one will come from the grave will come forth from the grave. All your parents, your child, your brother, who passed away, when he shall come again, then this one will leave the grave. Then I need my line of Judah. I need my line of Judah. <laughs> then when the line of Judah comes, he doesn't come empty-handed. But he comes with a new body for this one. Call him. Yeah. <laughs> this is the new body. Our blessed hope. Ellen White says. Our mortal bodies may die and be laid away in the grave. Yes. Yet the blessed hope lives on until the resurrection. Therefore, we will enjoy the blessed hope. Yes. Then Paul says, Ah, oh, it's in First Corinthians 15, verse 51 to 53. Ah, oh, the, the, the corrupt shall wear the corruptible. The mortal shall wear immortality. This body does not have cancer. This body does not have a COVID. This body does not have the diseases of this world. This body is not crippled, but it is the new body. Right now, I, I have one pack. But wait until the second coming. Wait until the second coming. There is a new body that I will, I, I will receive from God. There is a new body that I will receive from God. When he comes from the grave, he comes with his faith. Then the body, the new body is in him. Then the new rabbi is ruined. They are going home to heaven. Oh, our blessed hope. We shall enjoy at the end. We shall suffer now, but when he comes again, there is a reward. We will enjoy the blessed hope. May the good Lord bless you. Do we say amen? Amen. amen. The, <clears throat> the H2E2H is still continuing. 
uh, heaven to earth, from earth to heaven. We can see we are reaching the climax of this week. You know, and um, the God is, I mean, the spirit of God is, is among us. Um, there is a prayer box at the back. Write your prayers. Put your prayer request inside that box. Oh, Dr. Conrad is here. Dr. Conrad, I just want to confirm tonight prayers are answered. There is a confirmation that we got um, from our prayer meeting today, from the previous prayer meeting we held. Uh, there is one um, um, candidate that said her prayer was answered today after we prayed yesterday. What I'm trying to say, please don't ignore the prayer box. You need not to put your name, but to put inside your prayer request and see what God will do for you. Uh, this was meeting number six. Tomorrow is meeting number seven. And there is something about number seven. Um, the preacher tomorrow, we called him the preacher man. Preaching is his lifestyle. His name is none other than Rocky Kolani Makatasa. Tomorrow morning, be here and receive the blessings of tomorrow. You know, I just want to encourage you guys, all of you here, keep on coming to these meetings. Because coming here, you're not coming here in vain. You know, there's a blessing that you receive by being coming here. Ntumos, you already prayed for us. Yes. Um, we will just say thank you to everyone today as we'll be filing out there are refreshments that are there please don't pass those everything that is there is catered for you and 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 when you pass those refreshments you paint our hearts because everything that is catered is catered for you we rather not having leftovers than to have leftovers at your presence. As you file out, don't forget uh, to, to get your refreshments. May God bless you and come again tomorrow.